Hello everyone. Today we're going to work through an application of the normal distribution, specifically um, an approximation to your binomial. So let's jump into an example here of a coin flip problem. Again, these are binomials, so the coin flip is kind of one of the easiest examples to look at in this problem here. We're flipping a coin 100 times. We want the probability that over 60 tails is flipped. So my outcome of interest is whether or not it lands on tails. So I'm going to define a random variable here as the number of tails. And what I will note is that because of the description of the experiment, this is a binomial distribution where my number of trials is how many times I'm flipping it. And my probability of success, again, the success is the outcome you're interested in observing, in this case, tails, is 0.5. Now, the identity of the distribution helps me calculate the specific probability. And in a lot of these examples, you have a structure or formula that you can evaluate depending on the random variable. So what we want is, well, what's the chance that over 60 tails? So that's my probability that x is over 60. Now the problem we're going to run into that you'll see in a minute here is that there are a lot of outcomes. All right, there is 61, 62, and you would do this until you get to 100. And that's a lot of calculations. While we do have a binomial formula, we'd have to use it, what, 40, 40 times here. Um, sometimes a trick we could use is to look at the complement of the event to see if that saves us any time. But in this particular case, the complement is going to be even longer. It would be, you know, all the outcomes that aren't listed. From, so from zero all the way to 60. And so you have this property that says, okay, if, you have a binomial, which we do, and the variance, which is this formula, n times p times 1 minus p, it exceeds 5, then the x can be approximated with a normal distribution. And so the idea is this is borrowing from the central limit theorem a little bit where if the number of trials goes up, then the distribution converges to a normal distribution. So what we can do is we can check. So our n is 100, our p is 0.5, and we've got 1 minus 0.5. And so this gives me 25, which is definitely bigger than 5. So what does that mean for us? Well, that means I don't have to do all of these sums to answer this question. I can take this original distribution here, and since my condition is satisfied, um, that allows me to approximate this x. Again, I'll include that this is an approximation using a normal distribution. And again, the parameters of the normal distribution are mu and sigma squared, the mean and variance. And then, since the original distribution is binomial, I'll recall that the mean is n times p, and the variance is n times p times 1 minus p. So how do we finish? Well, here's the original question. I still want over 60. We've established that using the binomial PMF is way too long, right? Tons and tons of calculations. But from this line in yellow, well, we have the conditions that satisfy using this approximation. So I'm not going to get an exact answer to this question, but I'm going to get a very, very, very good approximation because the rule um, that's in place. So to find probabilities of normal distributions, and so for all intents and purposes, I'm treating this x right here, right? So this x is approximately normal. That means I'm going to take this probability here and convert my x to a z. 
And if you recall, the z-score equation is that we're going to center it at zero and scale it by the standard deviation. And so from our new distribution here, we're going to subtract the mean. The mean is n times p or 50. And then the standard deviation is a square root of variance, which from the numbers you see here will just be five. And so in one step, I'm going to eliminate all of these sums of binomial probabilities and transform this into a z-score, which allows me to use the standard normal table and define probabilities. So I run through my calculation. I get a z-score of 2. Remember that the z-table outputs areas to the left. So now I'm going to take the complement of the area to the left. And then I will just look this up on the table. And that's 9772. And so my final answer here is 0228. All right, so not likely at all that you would be able to flip over 60 tails. And so just to summarize here, what I'm missing is in this transformation from x to z, you'll see that the mu I want to use right here is n times p, which is 100 times 0.5. And that's where the 50 above it comes from. And then this sigma in the denominator is going to be the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. And since we already established that, that was 25, then the square root of 25 computes to 5. And so this is an example of using a normal distribution to approximate a binomial. And again, you can't always do this. So right in the middle here in yellow, you must check that you're allowed to by seeing if the variance is larger than 5. And that's it.